Good morning comrades! Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nuva Kring. I hope you all are having a wonderful day and welcome to a type of video that I was hoping I would never have to make, yet here we are. There are a lot of things that I want to say, a lot of things that I should say, there are a lot of things that are going to come up along the way as we're making this video, as I'm talking to you. So the layout might be a bit messy, but hopefully I'll be able to timestamp in any case. Let's just start where everything started and then I'll tell you the story as it happened and where we are right now because of all the things that have happened. Slightly more than a month ago, on the 12th of July 2021, I was involved in a crash with the 718 Cayman GTS of Apex. Something that I briefly mentioned in the video on the track day itself. I, like, I said like, hey guys, yeah, we had an unfortunate accident somewhere at the end of the video because I didn't want to capitalize on that or like make a sensation out of it. There's been an accident, the car unfortunately has been written off. Um, a lot of people said, yeah, of course, th this is uh, bad, we feel sorry for you, but please maybe make an uh, explanatory video where you tell us what actually happened because it would be great, uh, like good to know uh, how to prevent these type of things or to learn from certain mistakes of certain things. And, uh, and the majority of you who've been following us for a longer period of time can tell that we usually do explain these situations. How do they occur? How can they be prevented? How they are being resolved? But in that case, again, this happened on 12th of July, and first of all, we had to make sure that everyone was okay, then resolve a lot of issues internally, and after that, we could make a video about this occurrence. However, it happened on the 12th of July, and on 14th of July, we had this massive flood here. And ever since, we had other things that were more important, let's call it that way. Today, however, I will explain what has happened on that particular day. And some of you might find it disappointing that there is no actual crash footage of um, the happening, but I can tell you that it's not necessary because it all comes down to the fundamental driving characteristics, driving dynamics and the driver inputs. And hereby I also want to say that whenever the discussions of Nürburgring crashes were coming up, People in the comments sometimes will say like, oh, the crashes, the crash videos are good, you should not ban them because the, we can be reminded that the Nürburgring is a dangerous place. Well, first of all, Nürburgring is a very safe place because I would rather have crashed on that day and later on, something I'll tell you later in this video, on the Nürburgring and be protected by those barriers and not go straight into the tree, where, which would probably happen on a public road in that case and the outcome would have been completely different. Moreover, it all comes down to the driver driving dynamics, the driver inputs. So usually the causes of these situations are coming down to driver. Of course, sometimes there is a technical error, but it has nothing to do with characteristics of the track. And consequences, although you will hit the barrier, the barrier will prevent you from having even more severe consequences. So this is what I'm going to tell you. So let's grab one of the models here. No, unfortunately not assembled. Oh, here we have one. This will also answer some of your questions when people ask when I'm making these type of videos here in my office, what is this box of Porsche Weissach package? It is actually a GT2 RS model, which has been signed by Lars Kern. So the man who drove the record in the GT2 RS MR, GT2 RS, GT2 RS MR, Porsche T equipment. But in any case, so what I was referring to, driving dynamics. First of all, where did the crash occur? It happened in Tiergarten, the very first section of the track. Since this was a track day, the main straight was open, so we're going flat out on the main straight. After that, you're coming underneath the Bilstein Bridge and you turn left. Well, you start turning left already slightly before that and then proceed to the orange barrier in the bottom right and then that's it. We did already some laps previously. I believe we did in total four prior laps with the driver before that, so I was confident before that it was all good. I didn't have to say anything, but for some reason on that particular lap when, when he was driving the 718 GTS already on the second lap, uh, he started going a bit more to the outside uh, than before. We were doing about 240 kilometers an hour. I can remember that when we we're going on the main straight. And then I told him like, hey, you're going too much to the outside, turn more left. Unfortunately, he panicked and except for just turning left, he lifted. Now, liftoff oversteer or liftoff of the throttle is the most dangerous thing that can occur on the track with very bad consequences. This is something that you, the majority of crashes probably actually contribute that because in our basic perception where we know that, okay, I should not be going too fast. So if I go too slow or actually slow down, then actually should save me. But abrupt braking or liftoff of the throttle, not even braking, 
causes very bad consequences. So remember in the beginning of this video, I told you that some things will come up and I will explain them to you along the way. So this is one of them, the, the driving dynamics, the base, the, the traction circle. So we have here a car. When you go on the throttle, more weight shifts to the back. You have more grip on the rear wheels and thereby, especially with such a car, when you have the engine on the back, when you have more grip on the rear, you have more traction because the rear will drive and then the car goes forward. When you go on the brakes, the weight shifts to the front. And with such a car, again, when you have the engine on the back, it's even more beneficial because you can do even trail braking because you have more grip on the front tires and thereby you can go better in the corner. So these are the basics. Now, when you're going just naturally, you're still accelerating, you have more weight to the back. When you accelerate longer enough, the like the accelerational forces, the G forces go lower, but still you have more weight to the back. And then all of a sudden, you go fully off the gas. So the sh weight shifts forward. When you are going in the corner and you go off the gas, then the back end kicks out and then you, well, the car loses traction. And in the case of a 718 Cayman, now I'm not gonna contribute anything to the car because the car has done tremendously when we're gonna be talking about crashes. Because if it would've been in any other car or even all the car, the outcome would've been again probably different but the characteristic of the Cayman is the engine is in the center I'm not going to say that if the engine would have been in the front or in the back the outcome would have been different because probably the, if the driver already is making such a mistake then like catching a car afterwards probably would not have happened but the characteristic of a mid-engine car is that it's very balanced because it's in the center once it goes and starts sliding there's pretty much no way of catching it anymore. There are of course 0.1% where you could catch it because of some uh, uh, circumstances, but when you have a rear engine car, you can count the steer, then you catch it. When you have the front engine car, you have again more possibility to catch it. So the issue, once the car went, in this case, when the driver lifted and the car, I heard the tire sliding, I said, oh, fuck and the first thing that I did is just grabbed my my shoulders because there were no four, uh, six point harnesses I just grabbed them relaxed and then the car started sliding downhill hit the barrier on the front first then to the side and then slid probably for another two or three hundred meters because again we were traveling with 240 kilometers per hour the airbags didn't pop because of the way the car impacted it only damaged slightly more to the front and the side the barriers that absorb most of the impact. I think there was a second impact, I cannot remember, but what it has resulted, the car has been totaled. A lot of people have, well, not a lot, some people have asked like, how is this a total? Because when you see pictures of the car, you have some damage on the side, but nothing actually, nothing more severe than you would expect from a total car. A lot of things have damaged interior on, on the inside, not the interior, but underneath. The chassis has been bent in probably four different places. Suspension components, the coolers, the bumper, the door. Luckily, airbags didn't pop. And so long story short, the definition of totaled, sometimes people say when you say that car is totaled, this means it is beyond repair. The financial definition is this means we're actually more in traffic regulation or law situation. Totaled means that it would cost more than the actual value of the car. And the car's day value on that day was, I believe, 65,000 euros. And it would cost a lot more if you would replace all the parts. Now, of course, can, someone can say like, yeah, somewhere in Poland or Romania or whatever, in Russia, in this case, my uncle can fix it for 10,000 euros. Yeah, that's great, but that's a completely different story. The most important thing, however, is that the occupants of the car are doing well, the driver and in this case, also myself. Now, how could it have been prevented? Because I realize I haven't told you that, is that simply keep your foot on the gas. Nothing would have happened. Or alternatively, be very cautious, be modulate the throttle pedal smoothly. So don't go smoothly from full throttle to let go and even worse on the brake, maybe even on top, but just slowly release it. There is actually a good example of where I was driving the Golf 8 GTI and I was going from the dry patch to the wet patch Something that people, some would have done, if you would have lifted completely, then the car would have had lift off oversteer or the weight would have shifted to the front. And then as I was going in the corner, then it would definitely result to another rotation and an impact. However, what I was doing is I kept the pedal 
not to the metal, but are slowly modulating and releasing the steering wheel slowly and let the car slide completely to the outside. Do not in the like to invoke too many of abrupt movements and everything was fine and kind of laughed it off and you didn't even notice it but this was a good example of how you should avoid lift of oversteer even in more extreme situations such as having a wet track going from a dry track to the wet track so as mentioned in this case just keep your pedal to the metal either or like keep it flat through the corner or lift modularly or if you need to brake and slow down do it before the corner of course to not have too much of the weight shifting during the corner. Now so we have covered this first accident then time passed we had uh, all these flood dealings the track was closed and then the track was open again and uh, I was doing some laps and I was feeling really really uncomfortable after that first crash. I have to tell you that, of course, in the past I had some crashes, a lot of them myself, but also some with uh, while instructing others. 2017 I had nothing, 18 I had nothing. In 19 we had some minor incidents. There was like a cooling hose popped off of an E36, which caused us to spawn. There was a lift off oversteer in Hudsonbach, which was like a very tiny one because it was wet. So it was actually like, yeah, I think we hit the barrier with 20 kilometers per hour. Uh, we had one incident with RM4 where the driver went too much to the outside, went over the curb. The car was more or less okay, but the curb damaged the, the floor pan. So uh, that's when we had to replace the engine actually because the oil came out. So these were all, uh, all like minor things. Now this year I had the incident with the Yaris. I had then this happen and I don't know if it, things were leading up to this, but once I got back in the car with people, I was getting more nervous. It was actually already like, I don't know, maybe I'm getting old. I was feeling really uncomfortable instructing people and knowing that I can tell them to brake. But even if I'm telling them like, hey, keep, keep it flat on the gas, don't lift through the corner. Sometimes instinct might kick in and say like, oh, or like, oh, look, a penny. Oh, I lifted. Oh, I crashed. There are certain things that you cannot prevent. And yeah, it made me feel uncomfortable being in the car. So actually... Last Saturday, I spoke with Robert. I said, like, listen, I'm not comfortable doing this anymore. I don't want to be doing this because I don't like getting in the car with people that I don't know. A lot of people I do know and it's all good. And some people might even say, like, hey, but you're getting in doing videos with all kinds of people. Well, videos I'm doing with people most of the time, we are either doing a slow pace or fast pace, but people already know what they're doing for majority of times. And if something occurs, then they know how to counter react, how to counter steer. So it's a different type of story. Uh, I, want to, I want to avoid that discussion and save it maybe for another time. In any case, Robert and I talked and he was actually very supportive of the idea because this meant that uh, I could invest my time somewhere else where it possibly would be more beneficial or more efficient. So we agreed to that. But then uh, on the following day, I had the second accident with again with a Cayman with a 718 with a GT4 and I'm not going to attribute because some people like to draw parallels conclusions it has nothing to do with the type of car it was just a, a coincidence so what has happened there where's my model again <laughs> again lift off oversteer this time uh, this time we were going however through Bell of S so you're going downhill through Flans Garden maybe I should show it actually to you like this so you go downhill fly, so Flans Garden 2 you're going over the crest downhill and you turn in to the right nah, that doesn't make sense in any case you go to the right and there's a blind crest and jump and at that point you are being run off more to the outside and again lift off happened and I'm like there we go again so grabbed myself and then the issue that happened then is that the car spun completely and it hit with the back left side with the driver's side it hit the barrier so uh the type of impact for me personally was more different i i don't know i don't have inboard onboard cameras what actually happened with with my body but um i knew that this was going to be a more heavy impact because of the type because it hit the back wheel and it absorbed most of the impact the the wheel cracked in multiple places and actually you can even see here this part and for memories porsche came in 718 gt4 it's either an upright or a suspension component that actually completely got smacked off and destroyed so uh the type of impact was completely 
different and uh, for us the shock the initial g forces that um, that came in the, they were completely different so i knew i would probably have a bit more i wouldn't say injuries but consequences so the following day i was having uh pain on my neck here then waited for two more days and then uh, or three days didn't do much anything yesterday did two laps as a passenger in the BMW 218 with a good friend of mine, just like easy going laps. The BMW 218 is by definition not fast at all. But after the two laps, I got out of the car and I was feeling like really, I wouldn't say pain, but a lot of discomfort on my neck. And today when driving the car myself, just on public roads, I was feeling that the same. So probably I have suffered some sort of, of whiplash. But... Uh, as far as I can tell, things could have been a lot worse. Could have things have been better if we would have been able to wear a helmet and a Hans device? Yes, for sure, because then your neck is completely fixed and there is no issue at all. Have we only been wearing helmet, for example, in Touristenfahrten and not having a Hans device? It would have been probably worse because you're adding extra weight to your, um, to your head. And in addition, because you have extra helmet and you have like the, the, the seat here behind, so you're basically sitting like that, uh, you actually have more like uh, possibility to injure your neck even further, let alone by having more weight to your actual head. So long story short in these things is that um, lift off oversteer, study the basic, the fundamentals of driving dynamics. Go do sim racing, see how car reacts when you lift off, when you brake, what, what are the consequences, because these things you can learn in sim, like basic, uh, a set of course, so this is what I'm doing with a lot of things I have trends, like learned myself and to see how the car would, uh, would react to this year. So do that before you go on the track. I mean, of course you can go on the track, but do not try to push it because these things, the fundamentals are usually the always the driver's mistakes that cause the big accidents. I mean, of course, if you're going too fast through the corner, towards the corner, you can slow down and maybe you have some runoff, but lift off, oversteer, unsettles the car completely. And this I would say is like one of the worst things that have like more severe consequences than any other driving mistake or driver errors, driver inputs. In addition, I want to definitely thank Porsche indirectly for building such safe cars because it would have happened in older car or any other type of other car. Of course, modern cars are really safe, but in this case, those were like track oriented cars. And with two accidents, with both where we're doing around 200 kilometers per hour, one 240 started sliding, probably scrubbed some speed off, hit the barrier with 200. The other one was doing 180, started scrubbing, probably 150 kilometers per hour impact, but in a more like, so to say, stiff uh, component of the car, of the wheel, and then the, through the suspension. And in both cases, we're still walking, we're still fine. Of course, I have some uh, head uh, or some minor neck injury, I would say, but these are minor things. So thank you, Porsche, for building such safe cars. By the way, if some of the Porsche engineers are watching this video, both cars are hidden somewhere at Mantai, so you can probably contact Mantai and ask them to maybe study the cars if you would have any interest. And then the last thing that I want to mention, which is also more or less the reason why I'm making this video on, on top of me explaining to you how things can be prevented and explaining to you how things have happened, etc., is as mentioned in the middle of this video, I will stop doing instructions, something that I already decided to, before the second accident. This doesn't mean that I will stop them doing forever, but <laughs> funny enough, this is something, this is a process that pretty much Everyone I know who's been living in the Nürburgring long enough is going through. For example, Moritz, he had a very big accident in 2016, I think, or 15, where a liftoff oversteer again made the car flip forward, it landed on the roof, and uh, not gonna go too much into details, but again, liftoff oversteer. Um, and this made them say, like, nope, like lead and follow, fine. So we can do lead and follow instructions. but. For now, for the first month, I will definitely take some rest for myself for my minor neck injuries. After that, we will see, we'll gradually see, but I will not just randomly get in with everyone in the car. So whenever you're like emailing, reaching out, like, hey, can we do a couple of laps? For the near future, the answer is immediate no. After that, we'll have to see how I feel about it, etc. But um, yeah, this is something I just 
wanted to share with you uh, the things that have happened, how they happened and what the consequences are. And again, I'm very happy and fortunate that again, not only Porsche has built a great car, but also Nürburgring safety team and also the track itself is also very safe because as I mentioned previously, the consequences could have been completely different. I'm starting to repeat myself. So I believe I've said everything I wanted to say. Um, and yeah, looking forward to seeing you in tomorrow's video, which is going to be one of the vlogs and hopefully we can resume the onboard video soon enough because at this point, yeah, I could always stick a GoPro in the car and just send it out with the driver and then like, yeah, have fun. And then we'll see the footage afterwards. Anyway, talking nonsense now on top of repeating myself. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.